<laughs> Hello and welcome. I'm Peter, and this is the Fakum Rom gameplay trailer breakdown. So in the last video, we took a look at Fakum Rom and what the trailer had to offer, and in this video, we're gonna break that shit down. So if you enjoy anything here, go ahead and leave me a like, comment, and subscribe. Well, let's go. All right, so for these breakdowns, uh, what I'm gonna do is an impromptu breakdown. Uh, I'm gonna play the footage first, normal speed, and then slow, and then normal speed, and then slow. Uh, and then it'll alternate, and I'll talk over it. So let's go. Uh, this first move that we see here uh, from Fakum Rom is a I-15, at least a 15 frame Punisher, because as you can see, Fakum Rom is punishing Brian's uh, while standing one, which is minus 15 frames on block. Uh, this could be a little bit faster, but my guess is a 15 frame Punisher uh, It starts off as a mid it looks like uh, maybe a 4-2 into a 3-4-2-3 input And this second hit is a high so this is uh, Definitely for punishing purposes not something you can necessarily throw out because it looks like the second hit can be ducked because this does look like a high to me. The second part we're gonna look at is Fakum Rom's uh, maybe bread and butter uh, wall carry combo. And here it doesn't look like anything particularly special, but one thing I wanted to note about this combo is that it does four aerial hits and then the fifth hit is a screw. Now, normally in a lot of character situations, uh, you wanna do about uh, four to five hits and then do the screw. So I'm curious to see, uh, for combo optimization purposes, if there can be another hit that's uh, added on before the screw happens. And this wall carry, uh, the ending, kind of looks like Brian's quarter circle forward to one, sort of. Um, but it looks like it gives maybe a little bit more wall carry? Hard to say, but nonetheless, this is a substantial amount of wall carry uh, that Fakum Ram has. Not the biggest in the game, but a pretty substantial wall carry. And now, boys and girls, we get to Fakum Ram's guard break. What? A guard break? Yeah, that's right. I missed it the first time in round two. Apparently, Fakum Ram has a guard break. See, here, after Brian does his 3 plus 4, you'll notice that he's blocking. Holding back, boom, guard break, does no damage. And then goes for 1, 2, I don't know, 1, and then 4, or something like that. So, this is something that's really interesting, because this wind-up kick, 1, guard breaks, and then 2, also does a wall splat. Which means that Fakum Ram's wall game, if you're not on point, can be extremely scary to deal with. And... This is a, an entirely menacing situation because if you guys know characters like uh, Brian who has a taunt, if you're just holding back at the wall, he'll taunt you. Or characters like Steve who has a guard break, or for instance, he can just stomp on your toes and uh, down back 3-2 or something like that. A, a whole host of things, right? This is really scary to deal with, in my opinion, uh, if there's no other way to get around it. Uh, you have to either be on point and poke out, or maybe you can sidestep this. But the fact that it does give a wall splat and allows for, um, I wouldn't say most guard breaks in the game allow for uh, our minus, or sorry, our plus 10, which guarantees you a jab. And this ender that he does, this uh, 1, 2, 1, 4, I think, 1, 2, 1, 4, yeah, this leaves you in a bad spot because now you're face down, feet away, which is one of the most vulnerable positions to possibly be in because you lose access to things like toe kicks, you lose access to things like spring kicks, all your recovery options are now launch punishable. So bad times. Did you know Fakum Ram has a tiger knee from Street Fighter? A Thai character with a tiger knee? Who would have thought that? Check it out. Look at that. He's got a fucking tiger knee. Ugh. That shit is cool. So I don't know what the input of this might be. It might be as simple as up forward three, or maybe it's something like back forward three, because hearkening back to uh, a character like Bruce, Bruce had this bazooka knee uh, in the Tekken games where it was the input was back forward and four, uh, and it was a big launcher. And here, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they did do something like that. But it's dope as hell, guys. The fact that they harken back to the Street Fighter games of uh, Sagat, who was a Thai character, and now Fakum Ram, a Thai character, has a tiger knee. 
And he also has a parry. So, yes, Falcon Mom, at least as far as we know, can parry kicks. Uh, here we see Horang doing while standing 4 4, I think. This, I think this is the second hit of while standing 4 4. And Falcon Rom is able to parry it and get uh, a triple kick to Horang. Now, this triple kick is kind of interesting, too, because it does remind me of Bruce's... I think it, the input was down forward 3 plus 4, 3, 3. But I might be wrong on that. But anyways, uh, this looks very familiar to what Bruce had. And the fact that this move also does this... Um, it looks kind of like a screw uh, at the end, like a screw knockdown where you can tech afterwards. I think the most important part about this is that it will wall splat. So typically when a character like spins out like that in the air, you can wall splat. So being able to at least parry kicks is pretty fucking dope and cool. And the animation, I love the animation. And now we get to Falcon Rum's first rage drive. That's right, it's the first one. There's another one coming. Anyways, yeah, this is Falcon Rum's first rage drive mid hitting two double mid hitting knees as you can see because it picks up pretty low and then afterwards a dive kick that follows afterwards now something to note is that this looks to be off of some sort of maybe back one input because it knocks down and then the rage drive is guaranteed to do this massive sum of damage I'm also curious to see what would happen if these double knees were performed at the wall. Uh, will it wall splat the opponent and then dive kick the opponent causing them to be face down feet away again? Or will the double knees wall splat the opponent and then the dive kick uh, hit and not cause them to be face down feet away and instead just wall splat them allowing you to further deal damage? Nonetheless, this is pretty dope because um, it's too mid hitting knees or maybe one is mid and then high but whichever the yeah the second hit is definitely a high but uh, whatever the case it looks like if the first one connects the second is guaranteed to further add to Falcon Rom's utility he has a sabaki parry you thought this was a high crush no 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 I thought this section was a high crush too but in fact it's a sabaki parry and what that is it's a move that is an attack on its own, but at the same time, if it does parry a move that it's supposed to, like say for instance a high punch, then it will also attack as well. So it's an attack on its own, as well as a parry. A two for one if you want, if you want to call it that way. But anyhow, uh, this is a Sabaki parry, and you can see it when Steve does his third punch here. He goes, and then gets hit in the face with a cartwheel. Um, what this means is for Fakum Ram, if his defense isn't all that great. Uh, for instance, the character's uh, just not built as a defensive character. Then what he can do is if he reads that you're going to do a high punch, he has the defensive option to parry that punch and get a nice chunk of combo damage afterwards. So further adding to his defense and utility. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about this next move, but I wanted to bring attention to this pickup that Fakum Ram has. It kind of looks like Josie's down 3-4, which is a super low pickup, uh, and then allows him to further juggle and add to, I guess, his combo meter, if you will. And uh, now that I think about it, it looks extremely similar to Josie's down 3-4. Um, and what this really means for Falcon Rom is even if he gets, say, a stray jab somewhere or throws a down forward, assuming that he has a standard down forward one uh, and you're doing a jump, then Falcon Rom has an easy confirm into a conversion of some sort. Uh, whereas some other characters, after they do a down forward one, they have to do some other move uh, that may or may not pick up properly. So Fakun Ram here has uh, a really cool, uh, well not really cool, but uh, he has an interesting uh, down 3-4 which will allow him to get low uh, floating conversions. Now we get to Fakun Ram's second rage drive. This one is a low unseeable launcher. Um, this also leads me to believe that Falcon Ram is extremely dangerous when he has rage because as we saw earlier, Falcon Ram has a double hitting 
mid knee attack which if you're ducking then you're obviously going to get launched and take the guaranteed dive kick damage but here if you don't block low then you're going to eat this hell sweep and get launched and lose a chunk of your health uh, how much damage this is end up going to do uh, i have no idea because this is probably not optimized damage um but nonetheless Falcon Rom looks to be a terror when he does have rage. Next, we get to Falcon Rom's Hatchet Kick. Well, I don't know what the actual name is. I call it Hatchet Kick. I don't know what the actual name is. But his Hatchet Kick. On the surface, it looks like a regular Hatchet Kick. Oh! Full crouch. It puts your opponent in full crouch. Um, if I had to guess, this move most likely isn't seeable. I, I don't think it's seeable. Uh, and the other thing about it is that it's probably at least minus 15. I would be extremely shocked if this move wasn't minus 15 or minus 16 and is only minus something like minus 13 because that would be way too good for an unseeable low that causes your opponent to be in full crouch. Uh, also, the next thing I wanted to talk about is Falcon Rom looks like he has Jin's back 4 2 1 pickup right here. See? Kind of looks like Jen's back forward 2 1 pickup. Uh, I'm not certain if it has an extension or not, but from the looks of it, it probably does? Um, question mark? But nonetheless, this is the move right here. This, this hatchet kick that he did before is the move that I want to point out to you guys because it looks like quite a good low that he has. Uh, this one I'm going to gloss over pretty quickly. Not a whole lot to see here, but looks like Falcon Rom has something like a uh, King's uh, Forward 2-1. Where it pushes the opponent away and you use it as a combo ender. Why they're using Forward 2-1 here uh, with Falcon Rom is beyond me because they didn't do a screw. You probably want to screw after you get off the balcony, uh, but whatever. Uh, this was just a high, high attack. Uh, double elbow maybe something worth noting because so you can't uh, parry it and here we have Falcon Rom's magic four maybe or something similar to that I'm not sure uh, this looks kind of like a magic four to me very similar to Jin's magic four here uh, it looks like it's also a power crush as well so it, it's a uh, power crush as well as homie because it does leave that arc at the end where uh, Power Crushes have that arc move. So either this is something like a Magic 4, uh, which if it had Power Crush, that'd be very crazy. So maybe it's something like Paul's Quarter Circle Back 4, which is a homing move, but it has Power Crush built in. Yeah, more to find out about this move later. Hopefully, it's not a power crushing homing magic four. Better hope that, guys. Yikes. But wait, he also has a mock punch. Well, a left handed mock punch. I mean, I, I call it mock punch because it kind of looks like a mock punch, right? Four, four, two? Well, one in this case because it's his left hand. But yeah, looks like a mock punch. Um. Maybe 14 frames to come out, used to punish things that uh, have decent pushback. Who knows? Uh, I don't have much else to add to this, aside from the fact that it kind of looks like a mock punch, but with the left hand. Yeah. Remember that guard break we saw earlier that uh, would wall splat you and give Falcon Rom plus 10 on block, guaranteeing him uh, at least a one jab into a string of some sort? Well, looks like there's a counterplay to this, which is sidestep right and then whiff punishing. Here we see even a big character like Marduk being able to sidestep right and then whiff punishing it uh, and landing damage on Falcon Rom before he's able to block. So this gives me hope that his wall, uh, I guess his his uh, wall pressure isn't going to be completely suffocating because if you know the strings or you're really sharp and understand uh, when to sidestep, then you can play around this option. So this is both good and bad, I guess. Uh, this makes uh, Falcon Rama character that you, one, have to know what his strings are, duh. And then two, it gives uh, you a play around so you don't always just end up 
in a terrible spot at the wall and not being able to get away from it. However, this makes it harder on Fakum Ram because then he might have to uh, play around with his other strings to play some mind games. For instance, I do this and I don't do the guard break or I do this and I do do the guard break and it becomes uh, kind of a mind game of itself. Last but not least, I still have no idea what this is. This, this whole power-up thing, is this purely for the rage art or is this for something more? Right, um, we we saw that Leroy had a one-time use ability, which is this pit cane. But we don't know if Fakum Ram's uh, charge-up ability, where he glows red with lightning on his veins, is going to be purely just a cosmetic thing, or not cosmetic, aesthetic thing, where you just see him turn red right before he does the rage art, or if it's going to be some power-up of some sort that might be used later. Who knows? This is all up in the air, cause, well, it's a gameplay trailer. Oh boy, shoo. There you have it guys, that's my Fakum Rom gameplay trailer breakdown. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and uh, please, if you've enjoyed any aspect of it, or maybe I've enlightened you on any part of it, please leave me a like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, time for me to head off to bed. I'm Peter, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Ooh.